So in last week's Family Guy episode, it hinted that Meg's punching bag days are finally over. Or maybe I spoke too soon, because in this week's episode, it sees Meg discover that her tears of sadness produce tasty cookies. So is this episode a return to Meg's old ways of being a pathetic joke in a punching bag? Well, let's find out. Titled Baking Sad, the episode opens with a popular guy at school saying hi to Meg, only for this to be a dream. It was just a dream. And it's really sad that Meg's happiest possible dream is someone simply being pleasant to her. But things go from bad to worse when she finds out her goldfish has died, along with her pet horse, who also seems to be in a fishbowl. So to cheer herself up, Meg does her favorite thing, which is to hide behind Subway and wait for them to dump their old subs. Again, pretty sad. Alas, even this bites her in the ass when a garbage truck arrives and mistakes her for trash. And just when you thought her day couldn't get any worse, Meg finds out that she wasn't accepted into her chosen college. So this time to heal her emotional wound, she bakes herself some cookies, but ends up crying into the batter. Later on, when she comes to collect her cookies, she sees her family eating them. And at first she's annoyed until they praise them for being the best damn cookies they've ever had. This is when she quickly realizes that her tears are the special ingredient and gets the bright idea to start her own company. Therefore, Meg enlists the help of her family, Brian, Stewie, and Chris, and they head to Shark Tank to get some funding. But it seems that the corridor is so long to walk down that by the time they arrive, the show is over. So I guess the joke is that Shark Tank has comedically long hauls. Side note, in England, we also have a similar show, but it's called Dragon's Den, and it's pretty much the same thing, except ours has a lift, not a long walkway, and it's a lot less dramatic. Anyway, before they can cook, they need their secret ingredient, Meg's tears. So they try to make Meg cry by showing her all kinds of sad videos, like a dog mourning for a lost soldier and Trump's inauguration, but none of these seem to work. So Chris finds the saddest video he could find, a Foot Locker employee getting ready for his shift. And I'm sure we all know the feeling of putting on a uniform to work on a shop floor for hours and hours on end. Customer service assistants are the real ones, especially during the holidays, so let's treat them kindly, guys. So all in all, this video does the trick and they are back to baking cookies. And it's here we get a very funny scene of Stewie imitating Gordon Ramsay. 20 years of being in the business and you're the biggest buffoon I've ever met. And this got a big laugh out of me. Now just don't yelp any places from the show or eat at any of my restaurants in Las Vegas. It turns out that the business is going so well that Carter Pewter Schmidt arrives to offer them $50,000 to cater for a party. Oh my God, we'd love to. We then get a very funny moment of Carter not wanting to interact with Lois on his way out. Hi, Daddy. I said bye, Daddy. And this made me realize that Meg and her grandpa barely have any scenes together, while Carter and Chris have quite a few, really. I mean, yeah, there is that scene where they're playing Russian roulette while Meg drives, but that was years ago and I think that's it. And seeing as we've had so many moments of Carter and Chris together, I wouldn't be so mad to see Carter and Meg join together again. Anyway, just when they get their first massive order, Meg finds out that she can't cry because she's simply too happy now. I think, I think I'm actually happy. Oh, that's great to hear, Meg. Even bringing up her past trauma doesn't bring her to tears. And, and when I hear about my crappy old life, I just feel proud and happy about where I am now. So to save their business, they take Meg to see a therapist. And he reveals the reason why Meg is so happy isn't because she started a business, but it's because she's spending quality time with her family. Wow, I can't believe you choose my happiness over all that money, you guys. And with that, we get an honestly super sweet moment with them all together. Chris is right. We love you. Oh, I love you guys. And you know what? This episode didn't go the way I thought it would. I honestly expected the family to insult Meg and belittle her in order to make her cry to make some more money. I thought that they would love making money so much that they would put their happiness before Meg's and I'm so glad it didn't go in that direction. So yeah, while things started off pretty bad for Meg, I don't really think that this was a return to Meg being a punching bag. I think honestly, if this premise was done a couple of seasons ago, then Meg's unhappiness would stem more from how her family mistreated her. But instead, Meg's sadness came from other places, like college rejection and dead pets. 
it would have been so easy for the writers to have Brian, Stewie and Chris pick on Meg to bring up the tears, just like they did in the last season in the episode Why Meg Can't Jump, where Meg could only play basketball when her father bullies her. Hey Meg, this is the closest you're ever gonna get to hard wood. So I was just waiting for this exact thing to happen again, but thankfully they went in a far more positive direction. And we have seen some cute moments with Meg and Chris a few times before, but seeing Stewie and Brian integrated into this was super sweet and really quite great to see. It's so nice to see the shift and not to see the show fall back on old tropes, so hopefully the writers continue to keep this up and keep the development growing. Oh yeah, and I guess I should also mention that this plot ends with the reveal that the therapist was the owner of Fields Cookies, and it was all just a ploy to get Meg out of the bakery business. And then everyone in the building starts manically laughing. We then cut to medics bringing out tons and tons of body bags because the building has had a gas leak, which was pretty random, but also pretty funny. But you know what, this episode wasn't all about Meg and her cookies. No, the other plot focused on Peter getting his own TV show. And this concept isn't a brand new one, they've done it plenty of times, like when he had his own kids TV show, a talk show, a cooking show, and that time he became a news anchor. Not to mention that episode that literally revealed that his show was a television show. And hey, look, there's The Simpsons. And speaking of The Simpsons, did you know I have a brand new book called Collecting The Simpsons? Look, you know, coming up with seamless segues to integrate The Simpsons into Family Guy is very, very hard, all right? But yes, it is out on December 5th and it took two years to write and it's got over 320 pages full of gorgeous colourful photographs of the merchandise from the 90s to today. And it's a great Christmas gift for any Simpsons loving or cartoon loving weirdos. Like me and maybe like you. So yeah, if you're interested, I've popped the link down in the pinned comments below if you're curious and checking it out and learning a bit more. But anyway, let's carry on. So this plot starts off with Lois making Peter watch The View as well as Kelly Clarkson's talk show. She's actually very funny if you're a woman who claps when the plane lands. This makes Peter realize that there's a real gap in the market for an all-male daytime talk show. But Lois isn't convinced. All men run out of things to say to each other after 20 minutes. But despite her objections, Peter goes ahead and quickly gets his own show. Lois and her gal powers soon get fed up with their husband's show, especially after they call for more drawer space in the bedroom. We deserve a second drawer. It should be four to two, not five to one. So the girls go to a live recording with a plan to storm the stage, but it turns out that they don't need to as the show gets cancelled because, just as Lois predicted, the guys have already run out of things to talk about. And with this, Lois realises that she's been a real jerk, so she gives a speech and the two make amends. Now, I had a few issues with this plot. I mean, during Lois's speech, she said that Peter had gotten so full of himself. Between the embarrassing content and you becoming so full of yourself at home, and at the end of the episode, Peter apologizes for getting carried away with his show. Sorry I got carried away with my daytime talk show, Lois. Which is all well and good, but we didn't see any of that at all. This was a real moment of Family Guy telling us, but not showing us, which they seem to do far too often. In short, we weren't shown that Peter was changing or becoming a jerk. I mean, as soon as he got his show, he and Lois didn't ever speak again. Also, we hardly got any of clips of Peter doing his actual show at all. Therefore, as a result, in the theme of cookies, this plot felt very half-baked. <laughs> Overall, there weren't loads of funny moments, but that's not to say I didn't laugh a few times. I mean, I did like that flashback of Peter and Lois on their wedding night. Sorry, I already masturbated. There was a seashell on top of the toilet that looked like a boob. And Peter's show theme song being Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. That was pretty funny too. This is why I wanted to use the boys are back in town, but no. But you know what, the cutaway of Joe babysitting Tom Tucker's mustache was just fine. And I think Family Guy all in all really does overdo the alive mustache pet thing. Seriously, they do it so much. Like just a few episodes ago with Tom Selleck's mustache and on Wild West Farm, he keeps a cattle of mustaches. And I guess the writers must really like sentient mustaches. And then we got the joke with Jamie Lee Curtis appearing and promoting feminine hygiene products, which was a bit random too. And I'm committed so much to these reviews that I looked it up online just to see if she's done something like this. And it seems like she just sells yogurts. And then talking about confusing and 
strange random things, there was also a reoccurring joke about Chris having his own play. You gotta laugh. But again, just like last week's episode, I do appreciate the character development and I do like the episode overall. So for that reason, I'm rounding up my three and a half stars to four stars out of five. And so we've come to the end of the video. What did you think of this episode? Did you love it or did you hate it? Let me know down in the comments. Also for all you guys who have ordered my book, thank you so, so much. Please let me know what you think when you get it. I'm so excited for you guys to read it and for you guys to see it. So thanks again.